We'll see. Uh, first, thank you very much for, for um, inviting me. It's great to, to, to be here. When it comes to Brexit, I have a feeling that after listening to, to Sir Malcolm, uh, there is not, not uh, very much to add. You know, he's an expert, and it's interesting to listen to his, um, to his insights, really. From my point of view, I just want to, to uh, point out um, a couple of things when it comes to the risk of, of Brexit, and that's uh, that we can't afford as a European Union to lose a strong voice for a well-functioning single market and um, well-functioning free trade. I think that's basically what the European Union very much is about. And uh, without Great Britain, I think these, these more protectionist uh, forces that we see today in Europe will kind of, kind of uh, gain from, from a situation when Great Britain is not longer, uh, if that would be the case, is not longer in the Union. And also on a more general uh, view, I would say it would, would be a great loss. I mean, um, Great Britain is really important in so many aspects of the uh, European cooperation. And in a situation, in a period when we need more of unity, more of cooperation, not less cooperation, it would be a great blow uh, if we couldn't manage to keep Great Britain within uh, the Union. Let me make a couple of other uh, points when it comes to today's uh, subject uh, and start with the, the uh, very um, important point that Ukraine belongs to Europe. Ukraine does not belong to something in between, like the subtitle of this seminar suggests. Uh, in order to defend their European identity, the Ukraine people have, I must say, shown tremendous bravery and determination. You maiden activists gave their lives, actually, for the right to being a part of Europe. At the same time, we have definitely challenges within the Euro European Union. Uncontrolled borders migra and migration flows, the Brexit issue that we have touched upon, the rise of populism and economic uh, mismanagement. That's what we have to deal with today. And my belief as a Christian Democrat and as a member of the EPP group, the biggest group within the European Parliament, my belief, belief is that all these challenges stem from a lack of, I would say, respect for fundamental values. Despite the uh, current challenges, despite the fact that most of uh, our time as decision makers is used to solve everyday problems. Politics is about something more. Politics is about ideas, it's about ideology, and it's about conviction. And let's face it, I would, I would say uh, and make it very clear that without a clear political vision, without holding on to the core values that the European Union once was founded upon, we will not we will not be able to confront the challenges what europe needs as a whole today are political leaders rooted in ideas rooted in convictions and who dare to stand for it dare to stand for reconciliation between peoples and nations for a european cooperation which is about more than just economics and money. The EU is in fact a union of values. For that reason there, is, there can be no room for an inhuman handling of refugees, fleeing persecution and war. No room for extremism or terrorists. No room for politicians expanding their own well-being on the expense of their citizens no room for corruption or economic mismanagement. All these sort of shortcomings 
in contemporary European politics come from the lack of true values. Solidarity, generosity, human dignity, rule of law, respect for human rights. According to the uh, UN Commissioner of for Refugees, 60 million people around the world are currently displaced. What we see is, in fact, a humanitarian crisis equal to the struggle Europe faced after World War II. As of May 1945, approximately 3 million Ukrainian refugees were seeking protection and humanitarian assistance. Today, millions of Syrians are knocking on our door. Just as Europe showed solidarity and compassion in 1945, we must do it today. In the same way we took responsibility then, we need to do it today. Not because we are well off, not because we have sufficient means, but because we believe in human dignity and solidarity with fellow human beings in need. As Europeans, we have a responsibility, but the responsibility has to be shared. The fact that only a few EU members show solidarity while facing a historical challenge is frankly not acceptable. The political reluctance that so far has marked the actions is a result of lacking political leadership. Instead of standing up for European values, some member states have fallen back to self-interest and to closed borders. A binding sharing mechanism combined with an increased number of quota refugees is therefore an absolute importance, as well as a functioning system for external border control. Beyond our borders and beyond our internal European difficulties, on a geopolitical level, Russia today is the greatest threat facing Europe. At a time when the European, the EU foreign policy is characterized by a lack of unity, when the uh, US foreign policy is conducted by a lead from behind doctrine, Vladimir Putin has identified a space for increased Russian influence. This influence today is exercised in Syria and the Middle East, but especially in the immediate vicinity, in Ukraine, in Georgia, in Moldova. Russian military action and aggressive policies are of course a danger to these specific countries and their freedom but it's also a threat to the security and stability in all of Europe. Therefore, uh, it's absolutely imperative to take action. The EU needs to integrate Ukraine as well as Georgia and Moldova closer to Europe. We need to further assist in the national efforts for reform and anti-corruption measures. And we need to stay firm and robust in relation to Russia. The annexation of Crimea, the war in Donbas must end. Full compliance with the Minsk agreement is an absolute precondition for restored relations and lifting of sanctions. Europe, no European nation is able to handle the geopolitical threats or, nor the refugee situation on its own. More than ever, as I said before, we need unity, we need uh, co cohesion and we need a solid, effect, effective and future-oriented European uh, cooperation with strong transatlantic ties. A cooperation founded on values, values which we all know are rooted in the Christian ideas and tradition. Thank you. Lars, thank you.